and welcome to Eureka Math. This is Module 2, Lesson 11, and we're going to continue to try and find different ways to multiply, multiply decimal fractions. Remember what we said in Lesson 10, that decimals, right, if I have something like 3.2, right, if I want to change that decimal into um, a whole number, what I just need to do here is multiply that by 10, and my new answer is 32, okay? Or, if, on the same note, I can take 3 and 2 tenths, and I can call that 32 tenths, okay? Now, when I do that, that's the same thing, both came up with the same thing, I can go through the whole process of multiplication. Let's say I have 3 and 2 tenths times 6, okay? So what I'm going to do in my mind is I'm going to multiply 3.2 times 10, right? And that's going to equal, wait a minute, let me erase this part here. That's going to equal 32, right? But I can do that step inside my head as long as after I do the multiplication, right? 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1 is 19, right? So there's my answer. As long as I, after multiplying it in my head, divide that by 10, okay? And that's going to give me a new answer, which is 19 and two tenths, okay? So just like we were doing in lesson 10, we're multiplying fractions by multi-digit whole numbers, okay, whole numbers, through conversion to a whole number problem, right? So I turn that into a 32, right? 32 times six, and reasoning about the placement of the decimal. So I'm gonna to think to myself, where should that decimal be going? Okay, and I can also do that by what we did in lesson 10, estimating 3 times 6, right? I've taken this 3 and 2 tenths, and I've just rounded it down to 3. 3 times 6 equals 18. So if my answer here in my estimation was 18, then 19 and 2 tenths makes sense. Okay, so, all right, more of the same. Lesson 11, name on your page and estimate the product. So first we're going to start with estimation, then we're going to solve the standard algorithm, and then we're going to use those thought bubbles to show our thinking. So we're going to show our thinking now. If you need to draw an area model, you can, okay, but that is optional. These three things, estimate the product, solve with the standard algorithm, and show your thinking, those are not optional. So we're going to do all three of those things. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to do my estimation, and I estimate that that 1 and 38 hundredths could round down to a single number, okay, and 32 could round to 30, and therefore my estimation is 30. So I want something that looks similar to that. Now, there are two decimal points there, right? Or, I'm sorry, two numbers to the right of the decimal point, which means that that is in hundredths. So 138 hundredths, right? That's what I was doing in lesson 10. I was turning it into hundredths, then multiplying, and then remembering to go back and divide by hundredths. Okay, it was tenths in lesson 10, but now we're moving on. So I'm thinking about that, and in order to change that into 138 or 138 hundredths, I'm multiplying by 100 to move that decimal point over two spaces, right? So I can do this whole problem by ignoring this decimal as long as at the end of it I divide by 100 to get my new answer. Okay, so let's do that. If I multiply by 100 at the beginning to take out the decimal, I have to divide by 100 at the end to put the decimal back in. So let's solve. 2 times 8 is 16, carry the 1. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 2 times 1 is 2, drop the 0. 3 times 8 is 24, carry the 2. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Then I add 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Carry the one, four, and four. So here's my new answer. But that doesn't look right at all because my estimate was 30, right? So in order to turn that back into the standard form, I'm going to need to divide by 100, right? So this is what they're doing. They're showing that thinking right there. 4,416 4, is 100 times too large. What is the real product? So we have to take that and divide it by 100, and then we're going to get 44 and 16 hundredths. Okay, so what is the final answer here? 1 and 38 hundredths times 32 is 44 and 16 hundredths. And that's much closer to 30. Okay, so we estimated our product right here. We solved using the standard algorithm right here. We used the thought bubbles to show our thinking here and here. And then we finally gave the answer in standard form. Okay, so let's do number two. First, I'm going to estimate. <clears throat> Three and 55 hundredths is going to round up to four. 89 is going to round to 90, okay? So four times nine is 36. Put the tens on there, so add another zero. And what am I thinking here? So what I'm really thinking here is three and 55 hundredths times 100 is going to give me 355, okay? And that's going to let me ignore that decimal for right now while I'm doing my standard algorithm. As long as at the end I divide by 100 to get my new answer, okay? So let's do that. 9 times 5 is 45, carry the 4. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 4 is 49 carry the 4. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 4 is 31. Okay, now I'm going to multiply the 10, so I drop a 0. 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4. 8 times 5 is 40, with uh, 4 plus 4 is 44, carry the 4. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 4 is 28. So my new answer is 5, 9, 9, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, carry the 1 is 3. Okay, now that is way too big, right? My estimate was 360. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number, 31,595, and I'm going to divide it by 100 to get my new answer, which is... 315 and 95 hundredths, right? So I'm just going to put that decimal back in. Okay, so what is my actual answer? 3 and 55 hundredths times 89 is 315 and 95 hundredths. And that looks pretty similar, right? At least it's comparable. Okay. Number two. Okay, so that's all that thinking bubbles and all the steps and the standard algorithm. Now, I didn't use any area models, but if you need some help um, and want to use an area model, you can. If you need a review of area models, you can go back to lesson 10. Okay. And number two, solve using the standard algorithm. So, five and four hundredths times eight. And I'm going to estimate here, so if, I'm, if, I'm, if I estimate this, just so I know what I'm doing here, I'm going to say 5 times 8 equals 40. So I'm looking for something similar to 40, okay? And 5 and 4 hundredths, well, I'm just going to ignore that decimal right now because in my mind, I just multiplied it by 100, okay? So... 8 times 4 is 32, carry the 3. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. And 8 times 5 is 40. Okay? Now, 4,032 is way too big. So I have to remember to divide by 100, right? These are my little thought bubbles here. Right? 
So here I'm going to divide by 100 and I'm going to put that decimal back in. Okay, so 40 and 32 is close to 40, so that's my answer. Next one. Okay, so here I'm going to do my estimation and I'm going to estimate, let's see, what should we do here? We could uh, go to the nearest 100 if you want, 100 times the nearest 10, which would be 70, which would equal 700, okay. Or if I wanted to estimate a little bit closer, I could maybe go 150 times 70, but then 15 times 7. I, can't, I have a harder time doing that in my head. 70, 9, 10, right. Wait a minute, that's terrible. <laughs> uh, 35, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, 105. Yeah, so that would equal. Is that right? Yeah, no. <gasps> terrible, terrible. Let's see. And this isn't right either. 7, there we go, 7,000. So here my estimate is seven with three zeros, and here my estimate is 105 with two zeros. So, okay, so somewhere in there, my estimate's gonna be somewhere in there, probably between those two numbers actually. One, four, seven, and 83 hundredths times 67. And remember, in my head, I just multiplied that by 100 to get that decimal out of the way. As long as I remember to divide by 100 at the end. Okay, so 7 times 3 is 21, carry the 2. 7 times 8 is 56, plus 2 is 58, carry the 5. 7 times 7 is 49, plus 5 is 54, carry the 5. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 5 is 29, 30, 33, carry the 3. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10. Okay, well that's pretty similar to that number, isn't it? Okay, and I'm going to drop a 0. 6 times 3 is 18, carry the 1. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 1 is 49, carry the 4. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 4 is 46. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 4 is 28, carry the 2. 6 times 1 is 6, 7, 8. Okay, now I feel like I did that incorrectly, so let's see what we get here. 1, 16, 14, 10, 9, 9, okay, maybe not so bad. All right, but I need to put my decimals back in. So I'm going to divide that number by 100. I'm going to put this little thought bubble closer to down, to down there. All right, divide my answer by 100, which is going to put the decimal place back here. And my new answer is 9,904 and 61 hundredths, which is exactly between my two estimates. Very good. Okay, I do want to double check my math on that. If I made a mistake, leave me a message, okay? Because I was doing it quickly. Okay, here I'm going to estimate 80 times 500 equals 40 with three zeros on it, 40,000. Okay, so 83 and 41 hundredths times 504, three digits to double, to multiply here. Four times one is four, four times four is 16, carry the one. Four times three is 12, plus one is 13, carry the one. Four times eight is 32, plus one is 33, okay? Then the tens place, I could just leave blank, if I want to, and put in two zeros because I'm skipping the tens place because it's a zero, right? Remember we did that when we were practicing with our area models. If you like to put in the zeros and just want to go zeros all the way across, that's okay too. Zero, 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 zero. 
but I'm going to skip that and I'm going to go straight to the hundreds place. So 0, 0, 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2, mm -hmm. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 16, 17, carry the 1, 5 times uh, 8 is 40, plus 1 is 41. Sorry, I'm feeling a little distracted today. 5, 6, 7, 8, 3, 10, 2, 4. That is a gigantic number, but remember, I wasn't worried about the decimal here because in my mind, I multiplied that by 100. So here in my answer, I'm going to divide by 100. And my new answer is... 42,038 and 64 hundredths. And my estimate was 40,000, so not too bad. Okay, let's do another one. My estimate here, I'm just going to go ahead and round that up to 1 and round that down to, to 400. Okay, equals 400. And then I'm going to multiply. But I think instead of putting the first number on top and the second number on bottom, I'm, I'm going to flip it around because I like, I, I think in my mind that's going to be a better multiplication. The great thing about multiplication is you can move the numbers back and forth if you want, right? And that's just going to be easy for me because then I can leave the zero off and I'm only multiplying two digits. Uh, if I did it from the bottom, I'd multiply three. So. 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 1 is 19, carry the 1. 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Okay, drop the 0. 5 times 2 is 10, carry the 1. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16, carry the 1. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. Okay, and then add. 2, 9, 11, carry the 1, 4, and 2. And remember, I've got this decimal here, so I, in my mind, my thinking, I multiplied by that by 100, so now in my answer I have to divide by 100. And that's going to give me 241 and 92 hundredths. So my answer was 400, but I took that down a lot when I, when I added this all the way up to 1, so... Okay, when I rounded that up, that's a big chunk. Good. All right, next one, number three. Use the whole number product and place value reasoning to place the decimal point in the second product. Explain how you know. Okay, so if I know that 98 times 768 equals 75,264, then I know that the numbers over here are going to be exactly the same, right? It's only the decimals that are going to be different. So I can go ahead and write those numbers in. But now I have to think about where is the decimal? And I see this is, this isn't 768, this is 7 and 68 hundredths, okay? So 768 hundredths which means that in order to solve this problem, we had to multiply by 100, which means in the answer, they're going to have to divide by 100. Okay, so this number divided by 100, right, would be, let me erase that so there's a little bit more space there, 264 hundred. Okay, do you see how I did that? Same numbers, I just had to worry about these two decimal places here, so I put two decimal places in the answer, which is a nice little trick. Okay, so 73 times 1,563 equals 114,099. And the digits haven't changed. This says 1,563, and this says 15 and 63 hundredths, but the numbers themselves haven't changed, just the decimal places. So that means that on my place value chart, the number moved from 1,563, right? 1,563, all the way over two spaces, right? 
to give me the new number, which is 15 and 63 hundredths. So two spaces over means that they had to um, multiply by 100. And then in the answer, we're going to divide by 100. Okay. So the answer, I don't have to do any multiplication. I can just look at the old one. 1, 1, 4, 0, 9, 9. And I'm going to look at this number, and I see two decimal places over, so I'm going to add two decimal places over, and then put my comma in. There's my new answer. Next one, so the numbers are going to stay the same. But look at this. This only moved one decimal place. That means that it was just multiplied times 10, right? So that means our answer just gets divided by 10 because it only moved over one decimal place, right? So that means that my new answer is here. Okay, I hope that that is easy for you to understand. Number four. Okay, is this the last page? Yes, it is. Number four. Jenny buys 22 pens that cost $1.19 each and 15 markers that cost $2.05 each. How much did Jenny spend? So first of all, our first problem is 22 pens times $1.15. That's our first problem. And our second problem is 15 markers at $2.05. And our total then is how much she spent altogether. So this is our problem, and we're gonna break it into parts. So first, I'm going to take this side, 115 times 22. And I took the decimal out, but that's because in my mind, I multiplied it by 100, right? So as long as I put divide by 100 in my answer, it should be fine. So 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. Drop the 0. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. Then 0, 3, 5, 2. Okay, so in my answer now, I have to divide by 100, which is going to move my decimal point 1, 2 over. Okay, so $25.30 for pens. Now let's see how much she spent on markers. 205 times 15. Do you notice I put the price at, on top? Um, it's because it has three digits and not two, so that's just easier for me to multiply. And remember, in my head, I multiply that by 100 to take the decimal point out. So 5 times 5 is 25, carry the 2. 5 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10, drop the 0. 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 2 is 2. 5, 7, 0, 3. And in my answer, I have to divide by 100. So I'm going to move the decimal point over 1, 2 spaces. And now I've got $30.75 for the markers. But that isn't the end of the story, remember? I still have to add those two numbers together to find out how much she spent all together. And adding decimals, we haven't done that in a few weeks. Remember, what's the most important thing to remember about adding decimals? That you have to line up the decimal, remember? So don't leave that zero off. Keep it there so that we can keep everything in a nice straight line. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 3 is 10, so carry the 1, 5 plus 0 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and 3 plus 2 is 5. Now remember, the decimal doesn't change when in addition, it stays in the same spot. And then I'm going to put my dollar sign in there. How much money did Jenny spend? She spent $56.05. Okay, number 5, last one. A living room measures 24 feet by 15 feet. I like to draw these out. So 15 feet wide, 24 feet long. An adjacent square dining room 
So adjacent means next to, and I'm going to actually put this number up above it, okay? 24 feet squared. And adjacent, meaning next to, square dining room. Remember, see that word square? That means that all four sides are the same. Uh, measures 13 feet on each side. Okay, so I'm going to draw that in, but this time I have to draw a square. And this is 13 feet, and this is 13 feet, and this is 13 feet. There's probably a door here, but this is also 13 feet. Okay? If carpet costs nine dollars, I'm sorry, six dollars and ninety-eight cents per square foot, what is the total cost of putting carpet in both rooms? Okay, square foot per foot squared. That means that we have to find the area of both rooms, don't we? And we're going to add those together. So the area of the living room, remember area equals length times width, is 24 times 15. And that's of the living room. And then the area of the dining room is length times width, but it's square, so all the sides are the same. Area here equals 13 times 13. Okay. So now I have to add those, I'm sorry, multiply those to find the area of both rooms and then add them together to find the area of the whole space. Okay. So 24 times 15. 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. Drop the 0. 1 times 4 is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. 0, 6, 3. Okay. Is feet squared. That's the, the bigger room. Now the smaller room. 13 times 13. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. Drop the 0. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 9, 6, 1. And that is also feet squared. Now, to find the area of the whole space, I have to add those two numbers together. Okay, so let me see if I can do that here. 360 plus 169 equals 9, 12, 4, 5, 529 feet squared. Okay. But the story problem isn't over. We just found the area of the whole space. Okay, and in fact, I could erase this line right here. Ooh, I didn't mean to erase the whole thing. Let me draw it back in. This whole space, right, with the square dining room and the living room attached, the whole space, the area of this whole space is 529 feet squared. But what is the problem asking? If carpet costs $6.98 per square foot, right, what is the total cost of putting carpet in both rooms? So now we have the area and the cost, so we're going to have to multiply this number times this number to find what it would cost to put carpet in that whole space. So I'm going to change colors just so that it's very clear I'm doing the second part of the problem. And... 529 feet squared times six dollars and 98 cents and in my mind I'm multiplying this number by 100 to take out the decimal and now I have to do my actual calculations so 8 times 9 is 72 carry the 7 8 times 2 is 16 plus 7 is 23 carry the 2 8 times 5 is 40 plus 2 is 42 Okay, now the, now the tens place. 9 times 9 is 81, carry the 8. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8 is 26, carry the 2. 9 times 5 is 45, plus 2 is 47. Okay, now I'm going to multiply. It's actually the ones place, but we're going to call it the hundreds place because I just multiplied it by 100 in my head. 6 times 9 is 54, carry the 5. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 5 is 17, carry the 1. And 6 times 5 is 30, plus 1 is 31. Whew, 
That was a lot of multiplication math facts. 2 plus 0, 0 is 2. 3 plus 1 plus 0 is 4. 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 2 is 12. Um, 7 plus 7 is 14 plus 1 is 15 plus 4 is 19. Carry the 1 is uh, 1, 5, 6, and 3. Okay, but now in my answer, I have to divide by 100 again. So I'm going to put my decimal point back in. <gasps> wow, installing carpet is expensive. What is my final answer? My final answer is $3,692.42. Expensive. That's expensive. But carpet is so nice, especially when it's cold and in the morning. I know here in Venezuela, we all have tile floors with just a couple rugs on it because it's so hot. But, but back home in Wisconsin, in the wintertime, when you get your feet all out of your bed and you put your feet down on the floor and that cold floor, it's so nice to have carpet. So maybe if you live in the north, $3,692.42 is worth it to you. Okay, my friends, have a great rest of your day. Ask me if you have questions.